Hello everyone, today is Friday, June 12th, 2020. My name is Evan and welcome back to another market recap video. In part one here, we are gonna talk about what went on in the markets this week and it was quite a busy week. We're gonna look at everything from performance, market internal sectors and volatility. We're gonna point out things that stand out, things we should be paying attention to heading into next week. And then in part two of this video, we're gonna jump into the charts, put everything into context, look at trends, analyze price action, and make some sense of everything that is going on. So without further, let's jump into it here. Couple of the takeaways this week. Stocks, in fact, do go down. We can, um, you know, once again, see that uh, prices can sell off. Things can go lower. We got a good dose of volatility this week. Uh, beware of the island tops. There's a lot of those. We saw a lot of, um, kind of technicians pointing to some of the concerning price action after Thursday sell-off. Uh, but we had one silver lining at the end here on Friday and stocks did not close at their lows of the session. Now, if we take a look at performance here, for the week, if we take a look at the right-hand column, you can see a pretty rough week, all things considered. S&P down almost 5%. NASDAQ uh, doing pretty well, 1.63%, kind of going back to its old role that we saw uh, coming out of March and April, where the NASDAQ was the clear leader, uh, and we saw more of that this week. In fact, until Thursday, the NASDAQ was charging on its merry way to new all-time highs, um, setting records earlier in the week uh, and then we saw more volatility of course come for the Nasdaq into the end 1.63% uh, down uh, Russell down almost 8% world stocks uh, Acquiex here actually held up pretty decently um, yeah, double check that number actually uh, that might be a little bit um, larger. Uh, I'm gonna have to double check that number. Apologies if that one is off. Uh, but all in all, a little bit of a rough week there. When we look at market internals here, you can see uh, kind of a mixed bag. I mean, on the week, there were still um, net uh, new 52 week highs being made. You can see, of course, that number, uh, those numbers started to dry up on Thursday and Friday. Uh, so you can see we, we were in the 50s, uh, 30s, 40s in Monday through Wednesday dried up down to around flat here. That's something we're going to want to pay attention to heading into next week. If we suddenly start to get an uptick, an expansion in the number of stocks making new 52-week lows, that is not good for the market. That does not uh, historically bode well for prices going forward. So let's pay attention to that for now. Uh, we're trying to hold on to green positive territory. Uh, in terms of the AD line, uh, net negative this week, uh, 2,342 stocks net declining this week. We had Monday and Friday being our saviors, but that middle of the week, uh, we sold off a little bit too much. And uh, the percentage of stocks above uh, 20 SMA, you can see that number coming back down. Remember that was sitting at like 90% plus for um, you know multiple days, almost two weeks at a time here. Uh, so the fact that we got a little bit of a reset makes some sense. Of course, the way we got the reset, I think uh, we can all agree was uh, a little bit extreme. Now, if we look at sector performance, it was a sea of red this week. Uh, we're looking at the right hand column here. And if we look at the top performing uh, technology, so again, that NASDAQ uh, picking up its old role, uh, communication services is number two, and consumer staples. So a little bit of a defensive tone to the market there with staples up there, utilities in the top half as well. Um, so that was what uh, at least was, was trying to hold up, still net negative. And on the downside, uh, it's funny because these were uh, pretty much the sectors we identified last week as A, the top performing, but B, uh, sort of the riskiest and uh, some of the stocks that nobody wanted to touch in the first quarter of the year, that is energy, that is financials, that is industrials. Those were the areas of the market that got sold off the hardest. And we saw uh, that uh, basically happen this week as those three were in the bottom four this week. Uh, materials was the number three spot, uh, but you can see it was a very rough go. All of that exuberance, all of that excitement that we saw over the past two weeks really kind of came right out of the market market uh, in those uh, groups of stocks. Now, volatility here is front and center. Uh, volatility, VIX saw an extraordinarily large move on Thursday. It was up 50% on the week. Uh, I'm sorry, on that day, on Thursday alone, the VIX was up uh, 50%. It cooled off a little bit here uh, and ended the week 
at 36. So it did end up coming down a little bit on Friday as the market got a little bit of a bounce into the end of the week. But still, you can see if we look at the blue line here that the volatility uh, curve right across the spectrum going out to the year uh, has risen pretty dramatically from last week's levels. Remember, we closed last week around 25. Uh, we finished this week around 36. So again, you're getting a big pop there, 40 or so percent week over week. And then you're also noticing that we're getting a little bit of uh, some backwardation here happening on that three to six month. Notice how the three month is now um, pricing above the six month here. That's some uh, that's something we should be paying attention to. Again, we don't quite have it on the front month versus the three yet. So if the VIX continues to rally here in the near term, if fear continues to come into this market, when the VIX goes into what we call backwardation mode, when essentially the front month contracts are the highest, um, that is, again, forecasting uh, some pretty extreme volatility and um, risk out there for the market uh, kind of says that in the near term, the market isn't so investable. It's certainly tradable, uh, but you got to be careful in the short term. Uh, if we look at credit markets here, it's kind of a mixed story, but mostly net negative. I mean, the junk uh, bond ETF uh, down 2.23% this week. LQD, uh, surprisingly, uh, about flat uh, uh, pretty much on the week here. Uh, credit, you know, didn't give us um, too much of a warning sign last week. It was very strongly positive. This uh, week, it was pretty much in line with markets with what you would expect uh, on aggregate lower, but um, nothing uh, too extreme one way or the other. Now, if we look at interest rates here, you can see coming back down. Remember, the five year, I think, was up like 50 uh, percent last last week alone. Uh, so we basically just got the unwind there uh, with yields coming back down, which basically means bond prices, bond safety um, instruments there acting um, as the safe haven, got a nice bid this week. Uh, and you can see gold also getting a nice bid this week, 2.72% to the upside. Meanwhile, crude oil, again, giving back some of that exuberance that it saw last week. Again, when we look here at the monthly columns on some of these, though, you can see just how much we've rallied. So the crude oil is still up 23% on the month, uh, down 9% this, this week. So again, you got to keep things in perspective. All in all, if we look at the report card here, there was nothing uh, to like this week. Everything uh, pretty much struck out. The report card for this week's price action is just an F. Uh, there was no saving grace here. Uh, pretty much equity market performance, breath, risk sectors, volatility, credit market, everything uh, kind of in the toilet this week. And this is coming off of two A minuses from the prior weeks um, and a lot of uh, kind of overbought exuberant conditions. And uh, we got that hard reset this week. So that's it. That is the first half of this week's video. Let's jump now into the charts. Let's look at some trends and put this price action into perspective. All right, we're back here with part two. We're looking at TC2000. Uh, we've got our equity grid open. We have uh, a weekly time frame picture on all of these ETFs, and we have our smart trend filters indicator applied. Those are the colored trend dots that you see. Price itself is denoted by the white dashed lines. Now, let's start our analysis here in the top left. Remember, we're looking at a weekly time frame, and these are the weeks where um, it, it, you know, are, are really kind of fascinating to me because these are ultimately where the questions come in of time frame and risk analysis and outlook. And generally speaking, lots of the confusion and concern that um, we see out there is a product of time frame. So we just had a extremely turbulent week. Again, we talked about the VIX popping 50% just on Thursday alone. Uh, stocks sold off pretty hard. But notice here on all of these charts, if we're looking on a weekly time frame and we're applying our trend filter here, which is again why I really love having this as context, we are still in a positive upsloping trend environment if we're looking on a a weekly time frame basis. What we're essentially seeing here is if you look at the white dashed line in the top left, for instance, the S&P, notice that it has fallen certainly uh, pretty sharply off of the levels from last week up around 3,200. We closed around 3,040. 
and we're much closer to this weekly trend line, but we're still very much bullish here. And this is where, uh, again, having a simple heuristic or framework to just view markets, again, it doesn't necessarily tell you anything about where you should be buying looking at this chart, but it does tell you uh, that generally speaking, prices have been going up and to the right over the past two to three months, and that the benefit of the doubt right now are to uh, the buyers, at least on this time frame. So again, S&P 500, three bullish weeks over looking at our trend filter here, continues this week. P top right, NASDAQ, same thing. Again, much shallow, uh, much more of a shallow pullback here and still very much in a bullish trend. Bottom left, IWM, probably the most concerning in terms of the magnitude of pullback and the fact that it's coming back towards the trend filter, but still uh, we are bullish. And Acquiex here, which is our international, national Again, um, I guess that price was right, 3.5% down. I think that's what we talked about on part one in that opening grid. Uh, it was down 3.5%. So again, pretty good performance there internationally versus the U.S. domestically. So um, that's the kind of positioning there on the weekly chart. If we look at the daily chart, notice here that it too, uh, none of these markets have transitioned down to the bearish state on the daily time frame. Now, again, our trend filters are designed to sort of smooth out noise a little bit. Notice we are below the trend filter reading range. Right now. So again, if we're looking at the S&P 500 in the top left, notice that we are below uh, those dots right now, which tells us that if we stay below there, we are ultimately going to break down into bearish trend and things are going to start to move south. But that hasn't happened yet. We are in what we would consider the mixed state, the transition state. And generally speaking, uh, again, putting the trader hat back on now, the way we would interpret this from this indicator is that we still want to give the benefit of the doubt to the preceding trend, which in this case is up. So again, even on the daily chart in all of these markets, we still are in sort of a transition state. And that tells us two things that tells us a just how overbought and extreme the price conditions were prior to this week's sell off. I put up uh, posted a tweet uh, on Thursday after the sell-off, uh, basically saying like, look, you're going to read a ton of headlines saying this is the biggest down week uh, since March. Um, VIX is, is going you know, off the rails again. And these are all very true statements. But at the end of the day, when you sort of just analyze where price uh, was just a week ago or two weeks ago, given the fact that this was a very loud, abrupt, sudden sell-off, we're only at prices seen two weeks ago. Right. So again, it, it gives you context to understand that, yes, these are all days and weeks to take notice of. I think this is a week that we should not sleep on. I'm not trying to diminish the significance of this uh, knee jerk reaction to the downside. Um, but I do want to just kind of hang uh, the importance here that we have covered lots of ground to the upside and, um, you know, selling off, uh, granted in a very abrupt fashion, um, should not have been all that much of a surprise. And I think in the past few videos, I think we've done a good job at least preparing you, um, and, you know, certainly not doing a victory lap here saying I called it, I called it. Uh, but I think we did do a good job saying that the last couple of weeks have felt like a capitulation or a squeeze. It had felt like the market was kind of on that grasping the last of the longs in and squeezing the shorts. Um, and I think this week we got the product of it. Going into next week is now all about follow through. Is there determination behind the selling? Do we get follow through selling? Do these start to roll over and do trends start to significantly break? That's what we're now on the watch for heading into next week. So let's go into some of the price action here and let's talk about a few different things. Remember, there's lots of cross currents here. So as we always try and lay out, we try and just stay objective and look at both sides of the equation here, the bull case, the bear case, and kind of present the facts as they are. And then you and uh, you know me as a trader needs to decide what we're going to do with that information and how we're going to act on it. So when we look here at the S&P 500, we just look here at the weekly candlestick, you can see that we did open over last week's close. So we opened over last week's close and you can see we basically sold off right to the bottom of it. It just came so close to not being a bearish engulfing bar, uh, but it pretty much was. Double checking these values right now, 31, 31, yeah. So we closed slightly above last week's um, open. 
which would mean if you were very strict technical analysis, uh, technical analyst here, this isn't quite a bearish engulfing bar, but it's pretty darn close. And that basically, and, and this is a weekly chart, remember. So this is, uh, these are powerful patterns when you get bearish engulfing bars. We didn't get it necessarily on the IWM, but if you look, I mean, I'm sorry, on the S&P, but if you look at the IWM, here is a weekly bearish engulfing bar. And that basically means we opened up above last week's close. We closed lower than last week's open. We engulfed all of that uh, last week's trading action to the downside. And we did it on about 140% volume, the highest volume week that we've seen since March. So this here, from a strict price action technical analysis um, perspective is uh, a very bearish development, right? There's no getting around it. This here uh, doesn't usually bode well for prices uh, going forward. This typically can be the type of two bar pattern that you see at major inflection points. Again, uh, with trading, it's always probabilities, not guarantees. So let's keep that in mind. But that's certainly a check mark for the bear case this week in just terms of sheer size of price action and that uh, initial uh, kind of rejection. Now, if we go back to the S&P 500, go down to the daily chart, a couple, another bearish thing I want to point out here is uh, what we talked about point number two at the top of this video was the island tops. So these are some of, um, you know, kind of the favorite patterns that I like to look for. Um, they don't happen all that often, but basically uh, what this is summarized as is that you leave an island of price action here when you have a gap up right? So you have this gap up, which happened on Friday of last week on the 5th. So you had this nice gap up. Remember, that was the better than expected jobs data that we talked about last week. That was the height of the excitement, so to speak. Um, and you had this nice exuberant gap up and you actually got follow through. You had a bit of an inside day here on Tuesday. And then Wednesday, you saw some selling and then Thursday, the big sell off. But the key is, is that with Thursday, the selling didn't start from up here. It started with a gap down, which basically, means that if anyone or if you were a buyer in here over these past four days you've had no chance to get out of your position at break even you've essentially been trapped up here you bought the excitement after this and then you and then you got caught here with with this type of price action and basically you have overhead supply you have trapped buyers and that can create lots of urgency and angst uh, to the market uh, really kind of flipping direction and selling off hard in the other uh, sort of direction so this island top here is present in lots of different markets uh, you could look at the IWM you have it not as extreme uh, because because you really got the sell-off starting early here in the Russell, uh, but you actually do have it in the NASDAQ 100. You just have a single bar of it, right? So you just basically have Wednesday's traders. Wednesday's traders that bought the NASDAQ here uh, basically are stuck here on this little island. For how long? Well, that's something we'll have to keep an eye on and see, uh, but it certainly doesn't bode well uh, for the near term when you have those types of price action events. So again, that's another kind of check mark in the bear column this week, uh, were the bearish engulfing weekly bars and then also these island reversal tops. These are things that happen at significant turning points. Again, doesn't have to be a significant turning point, but these are the characteristics of things that happen there. So S&P 500 now finds itself down around 30, 40. And when we look here at just our price horizontal levels that we've had on the charts now for many weeks, uh, a couple of things that stand out. One is uh, this selling is taking place at pretty much the exact spot where this reactionary bounce took place in early March. So this was before uh, as the crisis was um, kind of developing and we were learning about all of the dangers and uh, potential problems here. This is where we got that initial reactionary bounce and then uh, the steep sell off basically started after that point. If we just threw a line right in here, which is what we already have on that other chart, but basically that comes in around 31, 33, that was the top. You can see again, we gapped over it, trapped some buyers, and now we're back below it. So again, from a strict price action technical perspective here, this is bearish so long as we are below 31, 33. Can make a pretty strong case here that, um, you know, in the short term, especially if you're a momentum guy or, uh, or gal that likes to trade on momentum, um, there's not much reason to be 
long this market until it can start to prove itself over 3130. That's certainly one viewpoint you could take on this market right now. Now, if we stick on our uh, other chart here, you can see basically 3130, there's that line. That's gonna be a key level to pay attention to because again, that gets us uh, back over uh, or that should be the resistance as to where we reacted in March. That's also the opening gap. And that's also where the island uh, of uh, rescue, so to speak, uh, starts to take place. So that's gonna be an important level to pay attention to next week, 3130, can the market get back over there? Uh, now on the downside, we got 2940. 2940 is significant because that is where uh, we essentially went sideways here for about two months. It was our longest sideways period. Um, in uh, April through uh, the third week in May. It's effectively where the market broke out and then started this last leg higher here. So uh, a retest of 29.40 or paying attention to this level on the downside is the next kind of uh, place, logical spot where I would wanna see and measure the reaction to. Notice we do have an open gap in here. Uh, so if the market wants to kind of come back in and fill some gaps and play, you know, um, you know, play that game, then uh, that's that's also sort of another target area you could start to pay attention to. Uh, but basically, you know, the way I see it right now is um, near term in the very short term. It's certainly a bearish development here in terms of what has happened towards the end of this week. Notice we didn't end up closing the week at the lows. So we did undercut last week's uh, yesterday, uh, Thursday's lows, but we did bounce back uh, above it to, to close out Friday. So uh, that is a, a small mild encouragement there. But basically, you know, when I look at the S&P 500 here, if you're a day trader, this is great because VIX and volatility are, you know, the ranges are expanded that, you know, it's, it's, it's great for you because there's a lot more opportunity intraday. But as a, like a short term swing trader here, uh, 2940, 3130, this is the real noisy goalpost zone here. And until and if we break out uh, either, you know, lower or at least get closer down to this area to potentially look for some value or support plays uh, or break over 3130, you're going to be in a tough spot and you have to be careful not to get uh, turned, you know, flipped upside down and turned around and chopped up in this box. It's about a six and a half percent range. That's what I'd be paying attention to going forward. So right now, um, we talked about some of the uh, the bearish events in terms of island tops, bearish engulfing weekly bars. One of the things on the bullish side I just want to present is really kind of similar to the trend filters idea is the fact that we have been moving up and uh, the, the trend is still arguably higher on a uh, on a higher low swing perspective. So, you know, generally speaking, if I look here and I try and make carve out the bull case, I could just say, you know, look, uh, we haven't seen a pullback, a meaningful pullback uh, in, you know, about a month's worth of time. The market was due for some type of correction to work off those overbought conditions. Uh, we, you know, certainly got it all at once, but if the bleeding can stop and if we can stay around or above 2940, uh, this is potentially a, a victory here for the bulls if we can just simply put in some type of higher low at this general area and we don't totally roll over and totally break down uh, with lots of distribution days and breaking of prior uh, support and resistance. So that's something to consider. That's the other side of this coin. Again, when you look at that trend perspective from a daily or weekly time frame, uh, that is still mostly holding up in the right direction. We'll see uh, if and, 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 and for how long that happens going forward. So that's the S&P 500 really that covers all uh, kind of the, all the majors here. If we look at the Russell 2000, this got hit the hardest. Remember, this was also up the largest. So uh, kind of posted something saying it took the elevator up and then took the elevator back down. Uh, that tends to happen in markets. If you want to go up really quick, well, uh, you have good good odds that uh, you, you increase the odds that uh, you can go down real quick. So, um, you know, generally speaking, you know, taking the stairs is, is the better approach for markets. Um, you know, at least it, it's, it's a more... Uh, orderly type of uh, accumulation or, or trending type of behavior for the markets. And again, for the Russell 2000, this 133.50 area, it's a good spot for it to hold. You can see we basically tested it on Friday here and it did hold on its first test. Uh, I mean, if, if we can stay over 133.50 and this is the extent of the selling, then this is a victory for the bulls. Um, so again, keep those longer term trends in mind. Last but not least, if we look at the NASDAQ 100, you can see again, high volume, a couple of things 
to note here. Um, first off, A, this one is, is very much still very near its uh, all-time highs. In fact, this was setting new all-time highs Monday of this week, Tuesday of this week, and Wednesday of this week. All three of those days, those were new all-time highs. Thursday was the big reactionary move down. Again, we got that single bar island there. Uh, a couple other points to note is that, take a look at this 237 area. That was the prior all-time high in February. So one of the things you could, again, think of, and again, um, we'll see if this actually plays out, but the fact that we are now below this 237 area is uh, is a concern. And, and you could say from a momentum perspective, again, uh, don't be involved in the NASDAQ until we're back over 237, until we're back over this prior breakout area, you wanna be careful in this market. That is a reasonable approach uh, if you're a tactical short-term trend follower momentum player uh, in the NASDAQ 100. Again, you can see we basically closed just under it. We'll see how we finish out next week. We've got the highest volume that we've seen in the past multiple weeks. So that I think covers all of uh, the market action. There's a lot to cover. And again, there's there's two sides of this and time frame matters. So be careful out there when you're reading posts and you don't have the context of time frame. Uh, again, day traders, you're loving this. Short-term swing traders, this is probably the most tricky for you because of the just the potential choppy action right now. And if you're a longer term position trader, then you might even be looking at this as potential opportunities to start accumulating some stock, some of the strategy, the strategy that that we trade, the Merlin strategy, uh, did start, did do some buying this week because uh, you know in some of the strong sectors like the queues and, and healthcare uh, started to finally sell off and back into some support areas. So we did some buying again, still very conservative with lots of cash uh, and expect uh, or have the. Um, kind of hope that this market does continue to come in a little bit more. Uh, but again, it all depends on the time frame that you're playing. So that I think covers uh, everything that I want to talk about. Let's 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 continue to move on to credit markets. Now we take a look at the weekly time frame again, uh, investment grade credit, no change there, still bullish trend junk here. You can see this one never did transition up into the bullish trend. So we're coming back down. We sold off this week down 2% coming back down to a neutral trend filter on a weekly time frame. Let's pay attention to that. Uh, bottom left VIX is up 47% this week and notice it finally uh, moved back into and above uh, our trend filter. Notice though it's still yellow here. So again, this is going to be that transitionary mode. We're going to see how VIX reacts next week. Do we see something uh, changing uh, or uh, is this just more of the same in the red neutral choppy state? for volatility. Uh, if we look here at TLT in the bottom right, you can see uh, still neutral there, no changes. Now, if we go down to a daily time frame of the VIX, and the TLT, there's meaningful development here because this is the first buy signal for volatility. The trend filter finally moved green here for the first time since March of uh, this year. So remember last time we had bullish trend for the VIX, we were trading at a 65 VIX, uh, 65 spot VIX. You can see basically if you were following this trend filter, then you know, you'd be out somewhere in the next four, four to five bars, depending on how you want to manage it. Uh, and you've basically avoided uh, trying to get long volatility or maybe put on protection, whatever the case is. And now you finally have uh, another attempt here at uh, moving back into bullish VIX, which is obviously negative for the stock market. So again, we'll see uh, how long this can persist next week. So far, you get a buy signal on VIX, got a TLT here, which uh, also moved green for the first time uh, since late April. So these would be your two early warning signs because remember on the daily chart for the S&P 500, for the NASDAQ, for the IWM, we're still in the transition. Whereas for VIX and TLT, we got the green light. So something to pay attention to heading into next week. Now, if we go to commodities next, uh, we look at gold here. You can see on a weekly time frame. Uh, did move yellow uh, briefly, but still again, pretty much holding above trend. Silver, same thing. USO bearish trend, no real changes there. If we go down to the daily chart, you can see gold still struggling, moving sideways. Silver finally got a little yellow tick there. Um, and uh, USO is weakening up a little bit. You can see going yellow there after being bullish for the past two and a half weeks. Now, sector performance. If we look at sectors here, there were a few standouts um, that I wanted to, actually there was 
really only, I think, one um, standout. If I go to the daily time frame, uh, we see energy went back to sell. Um, so this is an interesting one because, um, you know, if we look at the weekly time frame, energy is kind of in that transition state and it's been enjoying a nice rally. But you actually got a sell signal here in terms of trend for XLE. So that's something to pay attention to. Uh, most of the other areas of the market just basically went yellow and transition. So again, uh, moving from bullish trend to neutral trend or choppy trend is what you basically got across the board. Uh, no other big changes except for uh, XLE. Now, if we go to um, a couple of individual price action charts, I want to just end the video with uh, the first is just volatility to take a quick peek at that in terms of price action. You can see uh, we basically um, you know, saw all the movement this week coming Thursday. Remember, we did have, um, you know, we did have a little precursor here because uh, if you recall, the VIX was rising as the market was setting new highs earlier in the week, right? And this was something that a few traders were pointing out on Twitter too. Um, but basically, you know, you had rising VIX, rising stock market, and, uh, you know, it doesn't matter until it matters. And then it all of a sudden started to really matter on Thursday when you got a 50% pop. Uh, so VIX is back over 30. Again, this is a, um, a very high level historically, um, you know, for, for volatility, which tells you there's fear out there. And uh, again, this is a little bit concerning right now for the market. Um, if we look at TLT, I wanted to mention that because you basically got a bullish engulfing weekly bar for TLT, which again, um, maybe not exact because I think the exact price 162.20, let's see. Yeah, that actually, it is, it is. It is a proper technically sound uh, TL, uh, bullish engulfing weekly bar. So again, that's that's sort of something I wanted to mention. Um, and I also wanted to mention, you know, all of these all of these sectors we highlighted last week. I mean, we, we specifically called out energy at the high risk sort of excitement squeeze action. And this was one of the hardest hits. Take a look at the island top here for these three days. It's one of the hardest hit. We talked about financials last week. And again, Again, how this was one of the worst performing areas, the places nobody wanted to be. And then this got hit the hardest this week, or one of the hardest, uh, coming back into this 23 area. Going to be important to see how it holds. We talked about industrials last week. Again, you can see these were some of the hardest givebacks this week. Uh, and that was where all the excitement was the prior weeks. So that, I think, covers everything I wanted to mention. Lots of cross currents. Know where you are as a trader, what you're looking to achieve, and your strategy strategy. No two of us are going after the same exact trading style or time frame. So keep that in mind when you're uh, taking in all the analysis this weekend. Uh, lots of things to cover, um, but certainly turning points and uh, lots of opportunity when you start to get that VIX back over 30 and into the 40s. Uh, that tells you that there's some dislocation happening and as traders, that's obviously what uh, we're going after. So that's it from me. Uh, thanks as always for uh, tuning in and watching. This was a long one. Uh, but hopefully it's helpful. And uh, we do these every Friday, uh, the long form market recap videos. So you can subscribe on YouTube or follow us at The Trade Risk. Have yourself a great weekend and we'll see you back here next week.